Doing some quick notes here regarding Detroit Lions training camp day two observations. We're going to do a bigger breakdown on my channel live tonight with Adam Baydoon from Woodworth Sports, so get ready for that. But hell, why not make a video as well? But before we get into today's video, if you are a fan and think it's a smart and sound idea to put your hand into a metal fan that's on high, go ahead and subscribe to my channel because we talk all things Detroit Lions news and rumors. And sometimes being a Lions fan, you can cut your hand and feel the pain with limbs getting separated. Also, take that like button with you and let that bad boy get shredded. Let's get into today's Lions observations. Look here, Blunt here, man, three times Super Bowl champion. I just want to give you a shout out to the YouTube channel, Micro Mike, man. Hey, Eddie Murray, former Detroit Lion. Make sure you watch Micro Mike on YouTube. Calvin Johnson Jr. here, uh, AKA Megatron. Big shout out to Micro Mike and the YouTube channel, man. Keep on talking to everything Detroit Lions, and I just got to remind you, man, happy wife, happy life. We're going to jump right into it, and I am going to waste your time here. Let's go ahead and start with the running back position. It starts with DeAndre Swift looking absolutely stunning and fantastic out of the backfield pass catching. It's exactly what we know about DeAndre Swift. That's what he is. He was technically sound, opening, great cuts, showing exactly explosive and ability behind the backfield and getting those those footballs from the quarterback. That's We know that. It stood out. This is something expected. This is what he's really good at. He's one of those players that can crush you in the backfield. Craig Reynolds doing the same thing. Explosiveness, looking really good as a pass-catching running back. Craig Reynolds is an all-around really good running back. He just sound on every part of his game, and so this is expected as well. I love seeing it because I want to see Craig Reynolds get more opportunities this season, and it just continues to get better in training camp. This guy is just a quality player. There was one drop out of the backfield. Guess who it was? It was Godwin Ig Wilbuke. Clearly, we know that. This is what he does, man. Um, I don't know what his issue is with the football, but he, he continued his trend there. Jamar Jefferson, he failed twice to keep his feet in bound. Other than that, he's still a young running back. I still believe he makes the team, especially with the injury that occurred to Mr. Greg Bell. Unfortunately, he had an injury and he had to get helped off the field. That's never a good thing. You know, I wish him nothing but the best. Hopefully he gets recovered there and we have no more injuries like that. Folks, just like yesterday, I'm still stoked that the Detroit Lions are in training camp mode. Real news, real information. So give me a hell yeah in the comment section. Stone Cold Steve Austin, hell yeah. That's what I want to see. Go in there, post a hell yeah. That's going to be the pinned comment for this video. It's all about... It's all about having a good time. It's all about getting that pride flowing. And, hey, why, why not do it? Why not do it? Let's continue on here as we talk about what occurred in training camp. David, David Blau versus Tim Boyle was going on. It looked like Tim Boyle had the better session this time, more accurate throwing with a better performance, starting with the running back drills, giving the football to the running backs, just like we talked about earlier he was he was his velocity and height of the ball was well today that's really good clearly he's got the strongest arm it just he needs to be able to be accurate that's his issues there and he did well in seven on seven drills same with the uh incorporating the tight ends into his game did a really good throw to Quintez Cephas who we're gonna be talking about in a minute Quintez Cephas so far continues to pre uh, impress in training camp but it is good to see that Tim Boyle had a better performance. He was having some issues in minicamp, and we want everyone to succeed here. Blau, he had some issues on timing with Tom Kennedy. He had some issues with some other wide receivers. Again, we're talking about the low-end wide receivers as well, so of course there's going to be some timing issues for that. The wide receivers and tight ends drills taking place here. Monroe St. Brown, awesome as usual, continues to be a stud in his route and releasing. He is just a, a hell of a wide receiver. Undrafted free agent Corey Sutton, 
He was in front of DJ Shark Reynolds, and he did some reps there. Don't read anything into the order. They're going to be switching players out. So when you see that, understand that they are, we already don't know who the top wide receivers are, but they would like to see other players. And I think that's really important, especially for training camp. You never know if someone comes in and does a good job. You know, DJ Shark flashed. Like he always does, they're strong, and he's got soft hands repeatedly, always layers on the field. Reynolds put the ball on the ground, but Jeffrey Akuda got his hands on it. That's another thing about Akuda. This is now another good, strong day for Jeffrey Akuda. Love seeing that. Tight ends were not sure-handed, though. Undrafted rookie Nolan Given had two bounce off his hands. That's a cardinal sin for sure. Uh, Pro Bowl veteran TJ Hawkinson had a bad drop as well on a route. So... The tight ends are kind of slowing off here, and you're going to see that too because we had a lot of we got a lot of competition at the tight end position, a lot of undrafted guys here trying to make make a a name for himself. Not too worried about T.J. Hawkinson; he's actually pretty damn good, um, regardless. So let's go ahead and run over to the linebackers here. This is a big one that's going on. Is what's going on with the linebackers? And a lot of focus this time on Malcolm Rodriguez, but you got to understand he's been. He's been consistently repping with the number threes. Why? He's a rookie. This is something I've been explaining on my channel multiple, multiple times. Lower the expectations for this guy because they are gonna. He's gonna be a slow process. That's what they do. That's just what it is. So I know a lot of fans think this guy is. You know, he's gonna be the number one linebacker for the Detroit Lions. I'm just telling you, that's not going to be the case right now he's repping with threes and it is what it is do you agree with him repping with the threes that's another comment for this video is Malcolm Rodriguez a should he be getting more opportunity out there let me know why for yes and for no should he be repping with the threes I'm gonna say yes because you're a rookie you got to take your licks for sure and it's going to take a little bit of time clearly the beat writers are saying he looks extremely small and compared to the rest of the linebackers. It's really noticeable. He looks really short compared to the guys. Jared Davis, you know, we're talking about 6'1", and Pittman 6'3", so it's clearly a mismatch for him on the field, and I know a lot of people, you know, that's not an issue. Honestly, size to me is not that big of an issue. I just want him to be good. In the, if he can do everything well in the field, to me, that's that's what I care about. So I'm not too, too really big on that, honestly. Um, it's difficult to do more to evaluate Rodriguez because he's not getting the time right now for you know first and second stream. So that's what it is. Of course, Jared Davis failed badly in a couple team reps. He was bad in coverage. He had a lack of length. It's showing it. T tight end Brock Wright and Garrett Griffin got the better of Rodriguez as well. And there's some issues going on there. So as we see, the linebackers are having problems. Houston Malls moves all over the field. I like that because I would like him to make the roster. So he is one of those hybrid guys, and you're seeing it right now in camp. But he's on the third string. He's getting third string duties, again, as you would expect. Um, he did blow up a pass, stopping the tight end. Good to see him do that there. Houston definitely has closing speed, and he doesn't hesitate to get something. He's got he he's shown that little spidey sense and that's really important for the Detroit Lions. They have a guy that has that. You you can't really teach that. It's one of those things um that it is. When it comes to kicking competition, Seabert and Riley Patterson got five field goal attempts starting at the twenty five yard moving to the forty eight. 43, sorry, Siebert was right down the middle in all five. Patterson missed the first kick, pushing the twenty five yard wide right and close shave making the the kick. So the the kicker battle goes on. It looks like Siebert had the better one. Last rep, Blau threw a screen pass a little behind Nolan Given. He dropped it despite the coverage miscommunication. So again, seeing that that going on with miscommunication. You're going to see that as training camp with these young players. And that's just what it is. First round, Aiden Hutchinson. He spin outside for it would be a sack, but obviously you got the red jerseys on. Right tackle and Panay Sula got the better of him. Then again, Hutchinson spun so quickly, might have missed. The whole unit is a blink. He's really good. 
Love to see it. Penesul is a great player, and he beat Penesul. Love to see it. Devin Funch is up close. for three. He was definitely not playing wide receiver anymore. He was, he was doing all tight end reps, 6'4", 235. I had to guess he's over. To, he's even bigger than that, 240 now. Good weight added. Not a lot of information regarding what he did there. It's worth noting that that's exactly what we signed him for is, is that. So um, reserve offensive line. That, again, we already know what's going on with the starters. Really good, but who's going to be the backups there? I think um, that's that's just the the things of it. Um, but again, just going around continues to be. Um, I think the biggest takeaway here is Quintez Cephas. Cephas had another good day, and he's not the fastest guy. It's clearly he's not the fastest guy in the football team, but this guy just continues to make plays. You don't have to be a speed monster to be a good wide receiver. And it's nice to have speed, no doubt, but the guy gets open and he gets these contested catches. Yesterday, he made an amazing catch, and he did it again today. So I love Quintus Cephas. To me, he needs to make this football team. I want him to make this football team. That's, that's what it needs to be, in all honesty. He needs to be the guy who comes in here and make a play. There's not a lot going on with, with Pimpleton and the other players. Uh, the, the other takeaway, again, is the linebacker position. Who is going to be opposite of Alex Anzalone on there? Derek Barnes. It looks like Derek Barnes, Chris Board, and Jared Davis is going to be that guy. They're going to take it slow with Malcolm Rodriguez. And I told you guys this. A lot of people came at me. I told you this was going to be the case. Again, we're going to be live tonight with Adam Baydoon here in a little bit, so get ready for that. With that said, folks, adios.